please note that this video contains spoilers. Put off by how long this video is, don't worry, I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast, so while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself, and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. And absolution, game, thoughts. Now, as promised in the review video, I am going to start with the stuff that you might want to know before getting invested in the main plot. The ending, as I already said, is rushed and just bad. Basically, what it, what it turns out to be is that Travis was not really representative of the entire agency. You know, he was just a bad egg, and as long as you kill him, you can come back and work for the agency. So, at the end of the game, basically nothing has changed. If you don't play this game in the series, you're not going to be missing any plot. You, you don't really go towards... The, the one thing you could claim that happened was character growth for 47, that he, you know, saved this woman, but... Yeah, it's just... They, they're setting up that it's going to be this big thing, you know, he's breaking from the agency. The, the ending really reeks of a bad preview reaction and a sudden last minute rewrite. It, it feels completely detached. I realize it's an epilogue, but it feels completely detached from the rest of the game. Now, the basic... Yeah, look, c continuing on with the ending. Yeah, I'm gonna need this to keep track of, let's see, yeah, I, I actually, to, to talk more about the, the Travis thing, the, the big problem is, literally, this is, it's, it's a complete cop-out, it's, it's, it, we're, we're, they're building up that it's going to be a break from the agency, that things are going to change, and that's interesting, change is interesting, but at the end of the day, He's back with the agency. You know, he, she even says, "Welcome back." And yeah, it's 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 a betrayal. We're we're led to believe something. It's this it's this really frustrating current trend in fiction. I've noticed it a lot in shows, movies, and video games that we're led to believe something, and then we're told, "Oh no, it, it's you know." It'll all work out, and it's just deeply unsatisfying. And then we have the fact that the the the, the police looking for forty seven just goes nowhere. You know, you, at one point you see that the black detective and he's like, ah, he's here, and nothing came of that. I don't even think we saw the black detective again. There's no point. There's not even a cutscene at the end saying, oh, well, we'll clear your name. I'm sure they could. And he didn't actually kill that person, although he's killed plenty of people since. But, yeah, it just doesn't... The, the whole point, again, in earlier games, he was in the shadows. People, he, His existence was a rumor. And now... You know, the police have been trying to track him down. Even if they didn't, even if they... Yeah, if, you know, them getting him, that, that was the big thing. You know, even if they, if he could prove that he didn't do it, they're going to check his prints, and it's going to be a huge problem. Because dude's got no identity. He's not supposed to exist. And that's compelling. That was, that was clever. But then they don't do anything with it. It's just the the only thing it amounts to is that the police are a threat whether or not you've done anything for the entire game. You know, you you see a police officer and he might actually realize, hey, this is the guy we, you know, wanted for murder. And the let's see. Yeah, I 
this idea that, you know, oh, the agency's not really bad, this is something they've never really addressed directly. What they've done is try to keep them, try to keep the targets bad people. They, most of the people you kill over the course of these games are genuinely uh, the, the main targets, the real people, you know, they're, they're d d arms dealers and terrorists and so on and so forth. And that's, that's fine, basically, but you can't really go and say, no, 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 this firm, which literally makes a living killing people outside of the law, we're, we're not talking CIA special agents here, they're not really bad. That's part of the attraction, again, it's, that's part of why we like this. It's not this big, you know, Assassin's Creed, say what you will about this, I'm not really trying to down, it's, it's fine enough concept, sure, but they just immediately say, no, 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 we're freedom fighters, we're just fighting this secret war against the other side who are like, you know, the big bad, and they're, they're the cause of everything bad in the world, basically, and yeah, that's fine, but that's immediately, you, there's, how do you argue with that? You know, you, I guess you disprove that the Templars are against the bad, but as far as I've played so far, they seem to really be setting up unequivocally, assassins are good, Templars are bad, black and white. The part of the interesting thing with this, with this franchise, is that 47 is an anti-hero. The agency is not unequivocal, is, is not definitively good. The contracts you take are of bad people, but we don't know who they're also killing. For all we know, they could be killing some people who are, you know, at least not genuinely bad. But, but now they're suddenly saying, no, 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 this one guy who was, you know, doing the, you know, and, and I realize it was never, it was not the agency that created 47. I suppose, I, I shouldn't really give away exactly who it was to anyone who hasn't learned that, though. Yeah. It was not the agency. So them suddenly taking on this thing, you, yeah, that is a bit, it's, it's wrong. It's, you know, it's, it's not right to raise people to be killers like that. It should be a choice if nothing else. Wow. See, it's, it's just, it instantly gets really iffy. No, 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 we're saying people should choose to kill people for us. It's just, you can't make the agency out to be anything other than at least morally gray. It just does not work that way. And it's, maybe you could argue that they're not really saying they're good guys, but the problem is that Travis was definitively a bad guy. And he was part of the agency, but then at the end, it's like, no, 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 the agency didn't know what he was doing, and otherwise they would have stopped him, you know, and, yeah, I just, it's, it's a really, really bad idea. Now, let's see. I... I quite enjoyed the Kane and Lynch cameos, complete with them <laughs> living up to their, yeah, they, they live up to their characters. You know, Kane makes a bad decision. Sure, he didn't start the bar fight, but he was still in a bar, in a hick bar, and it, yeah, it's 47 causing the bar fight, but he shouldn't have hung out there, and he does instantly go for just knocking people out. Yeah, so he makes a bad decision, and that's that's his character. And Lynch, he's shooting, and, and we're told, you know, he's been spending all the, what was it, shotgun ammo. Because he's been out there all day and just shooting, and he's psycho. He's shooting these garden gnomes because he thinks they're looking at him, they're staring at him. Wow, that's, I, I was a little unhappy that I couldn't steal Lynch's clothes. I didn't really get around to trying 
king, but yeah, I probably will. And it did make me wonder why they... And, and it's also, Kane actually mentions that Lynch is there. He doesn't mention him by name, but he says, a, a business associate of mine is in town. I'm waiting for him to be done, you know. He sent Lynch out to legally buy them some weapons, and he's waiting for Lynch to get back. And Lynch isn't back because he spent the entire afternoon standing and shooting at garden gnomes. So, the, the thing that makes me wonder is timeline, where exactly does this fit? Because Kane has the broken nose of the first game, and Lynch has his look of the second game. So, yeah, I, I'm not really arguing that, you know, I like Lynch's look that way, and I definitely prefer Kane's look in the first I'm not saying there's something wrong with the second game, but just hit him with the broken nose is, yeah, that's, that's my favorite way of him looking. But, yeah, it's just kind of, and then even, you know, he's still got the scar across the eye. But, but yeah, I, I kind of like that they were, they were both there and living up to their characters. Now... Let's see, I quite like that the... There's a playstyle called Dynamite Harry. I think it's like if you blow a lot of stuff up. I discovered it by accident. I, I swear. And for those of you not in the know, international audiences, Dynamite Harry, I, I googled this just to make sure that it wasn't, you know, something I didn't know. Nope, as far as I can tell, that's a reference to the Olsen gang. Which, technically it's still, they're still kind of sometimes making movies out of those, but the real deal, you know, the, the good Olsen gang movies are from back in the 60s to 80s, late 60s to... I think 81 was when the very first, very last one came out. And there's like 12, 13 movies, and they're just, they're a national treasure of Denmark. And yeah, it's, Dynamite Harry is a character who appears in some of those. So I, I like that they did a, a tribute to that. Now, I found that you get, you got captured way too much. The... You know, and, and uh, yeah, you know, for example, you, you go after Blake and Sanchez knocks you out. You know, you go after the Sheriff Skorky, tasered. It just, it, it just keeps happening and it's not that interesting. It's a way to delay the plot because otherwise Blake would be dead by the end of that first level, that one of those first levels. And so would Skorky, you know, you wouldn't have those couple of extra levels. And basically, I also really lost patience with how many of the kills were confined to a cutscene, or basically a cutscene where, it, like, you, yeah, I'll get more into Diana, because I just realized I, yeah, I, I was going to get rid of that, I think. Anyway, the, yeah, Skorky, for example, is just suddenly, you're, you know, you're in the church, and just, Suddenly you have to really quickly shoot him, and I do like that you can get killed there, but you you don't get to choose at all how you kill him. It's just well, really quickly, you know, shoot him with the, yeah. And the, let's see. Yeah, you also only have the one choice with Blake when you finally do kill him, and that was such a... I hate when, when stealth games do this. It's just so boring when they suddenly do a game, well, a level near the end where, oh, now there's mines everywhere, ooh, it's, and there's a ticking clock, and it's just, it's so fake. It doesn't, it doesn't always fail, but it often does. I, again, I love the way they chose to end contracts, the, the game. It's really, I wish they hadn't named the mode in this contract, because it's kind of, yeah. And, and the second game is called Sound Assassin, but at the same time, that's the best rating you can get in any of the games. So whenever you mention Contracts or Sound Assassin, people don't know if you're talking about a game or... yeah. Anyway, in the third Hitman game, the last level is literally another contract. You can get Sound Assassin in it. You can, com you can continue to be this ghost. Sure, there's a SWAT team moving in on you at the start of that level, but it could still happen, and that's seriously cool. 
and I just wish they would do that again, but I, I get that they can't do the same thing over and over, but yeah, with this it was just real let down with the ending and such. I guess Diana. I, again, you know, I, I wasn't, you know, I would have liked to be, the, you know, to be, to be, what, what do you call it, to be prompted to fire the bullet, at least, you know, so it's like, oh man, do I really have to, and yeah, it, that would have been good, and I also don't completely understand how they, fa I, I've, it is pretty unforgivable that they don't even explain how she faked her death. It's just ridiculous. The... Yeah, I... Okay, I can accept that maybe he shot her and she just didn't die. That he he shot her and... He shot her somewhere where there would be a bunch of blood and then she pretended to die for the sake of the audience. I, look, I'm not saying that we see her die or that what we see completely excludes the possibility that she was still alive. I'm saying she was lying there, talking slowly, barely talking. Why would she do that if just for the audience's benefit, if they both knew that he was... No, it just doesn't work. You can't just pull that crap. It's just ridiculous. And then, you know, the ending with, oh, she's still alive. And the, and the thing, just tell me, did you kill Diana? You will never know. And then... For a second there, I, I kind of realized before I saw that she was going to turn out to be alive, and I just... I mean, we're talking full-on Darth Vader, Revenge of the Sith... No, It's ridiculous! I can't believe they would pull that. It's... Man! That's, that is ridiculous! And it's just, again... I do appreciate that we find out a little bit about Diana this time. I mean, this time she finally gets a face. We, we realize she's got a little bit of junk in the trunk. And, yeah, there's some, some motivation. It makes sense that she would try to protect Victoria, as well as it makes sense for 47 to protect Victoria. You know, she has a conscience, and that was why she, you know, took out... Wait, was that why she took out the agency? Wait, I thought it was Travis doing the... Did Travis, was Travis already there? Yeah, see, because they have all these twists, they're contradicting each other. Okay, so maybe Travis was already there, and maybe it was because of Victoria that she, but, but then why didn't she, no, I just, it doesn't, maybe, maybe it does basically hold up, but it's not a good plot, at least, and, Yeah, I think I've pretty much said everything I wanted to about Diana. Yeah, also Lenny, you know, again, a character where you only have the one choice. Sure, you could choose what weapon to use, and I do like that you could scare him by shooting the ground, but... Yeah, it just... Why the heck did Skorky start running off? It's, the moment I got out of my restraints, which weren't really restrained. I don't even know what what happened there. Did I miss a cutscene? Yeah, okay, Scurvy. Yeah, it's, it's basically related. I'll tie it back around. Scurvy is apparently running immediately after he's captured 47, because the, I, I checked the briefing immediately, and it's like, Scurvy's got a head start. What? You mean Scurvy isn't coming back to check on you if you get... He doesn't know you're running. Why the heck is he trying to... Lee. It makes no sense. If he... He could have just killed 47. 47 was literally in front of, I did like the joke about Dexter picking up the, the thing with, the, you know, the BDSM thing. And it, oh, what happened to the the, the, the the woman with the nice curves? You know, I mean, why didn't she... There, there was no follow-up on her either. You know... Anyway, yeah, just... Scorpion is just immediately running. I get why he's running once he's been shot in the leg and once the ICA start taking over his town. But what... Why did he start running immediately after 47 was captured? And that, again, brings me back to the non-restraints that the, Yeah, I realize I just... Yeah, both air quotes and non-restraints. Yeah. Anyway, 
you immediately break out. I do like that you can pretend to be to still be. That's that's like the one hiding spot that I actually kind of liked. You know, and there are a few others, but still, I, I like that that's a possibility. You know, and I question why there is a you know. It's, it's too convenient, at least, that there is this, you know, what's it called, fire alarm right in there, but it's, it's a cool enough idea that, you know, then you sneak up on the guy and take him out. And, yeah, and how did, how did Skirk even know that he was being followed by 47? Because he seems to be expecting that. Now... Yeah, it's, it's a very cool image when 47 walks away from the town of Hope on fire. I don't know why it's on fire. I guess the fire from that one truck that flipped over just spread that far. I guess the ICA wouldn't exactly be letting in the fire department, but still. And then you have the level of him just getting his suit back. Let's see. And I... White light. The sushi guy. You know, I I think he's just plain stupid. I, I would not say, oh cool, you've got a gun to, to a guy looking that serious in an elevator, but it was pretty funny how the elevator's been on lockdown and then when it finally stops at the force, finally stupid, stupid, stupid. It's just, he's all, he's pretty funny and he's wearing these clothes and it's just and get up. There's no no one but a sushi guy in here. What exactly was 47's plan? Was he just gonna climb up there and hope that they didn't think about why there was no one there? But anyway, yeah. Nice little nod to Blood Money, by the way, with him climbing up the elevator. And and it's like, who ordered sushi? Oh, Layla did. Well, see that she gets it then, because it's like you know, which one of you morons ordered sushi? Uh, our, you know, you know the the. the person who's second in command here. Well, okay, get it to her then. <laughs> and I really like that. I don't even need to look at the, the when, when she's trying to seduce you. If you get into the panic room, she tries to seduce you. And you know, taking off all the and and it's just about to get really awesome. All the, you know, let's be honest, primarily male demographic playing this game is just in their drooling tongues out, and suddenly she pulls a gun, I have to presume she was hiding it where that chick from Machete, the naked one, was hiding her cell phone, because I did not see a holster, and I felt like we saw her from pretty much every angle there, but yeah, you know, I, I did like that. And no, I did not fail, I was quick enough on the trigger. The... Last ones. It, it was seriously badass when Victoria went on Project Christmas on Dexter's guards, and then of course they completely shoot themselves in the foot with having her easily taken out because she's like, "What have I done?" Afterwards, you know, and it, yeah, it's. See, they, they could have made that work. They could have had, like, a team of people standing with taser guns or something. And, you know, like, she avoids the first couple, but then she gets hit, you know, eventually. But, no, it's just one guy with a syringe. That's enough. And that was actually at least what I had written down. I think that does pretty well cover it all. I was a little confused by if if Dexter loves Lenny, why does he let Wade speak to Lenny like that? You know, the the nickname and all. I did like why, how, you know, when you go after Lenny, after he shot up all these nuns, you know, not the sexy nuns, the, the real nuns, and you know, they're coming back and the, the one of his gang members is like, this is hot sauce. I asked for spicy sauce, you know. Lenny just killed 50 people single-handedly. Yeah, they were unarmed and they were like, you know, they were priests 
and nuns, dude. There might have been 50, but it's not that impressive. You know, you actually know what he's talking about. And then, you know, he's talking, ah, oh, there's this Victoria. I have to slap her around. So that, you know, when he's sitting there, you know, shaving Lenny. Huge wasted opportunity, by the way. You, that should have been a level where you had to kill the, the guy and you, you know, use the razor to... But no, instead you just subdue him. I get why you subdue him. I'm not saying that, but it's just... Yeah, it, it seems like the kind of thing where, well, sure, of course you could have also just used the, the you could drug the pizza. I might try that on a later playthrough, but yeah, it's just, and I do believe that covers everything, so, yeah. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.